And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here. It's race number seven, main event time here at the Springfield Mile as we get ready to continue on the first half of the regular season, heading up towards All-Star Race Weekend for season four of the Answer A Duracell Cup Series. Getting ready to go dirt track racing. You guys earlier today saw the qualifying, the non-charter qualifying event that took place, locking six drivers into today's field along with the 36 drivers already locked in through charters. And it's time to find out if we're going to have another repeat winner or maybe a new driver go to victory lane here this season. I say another repeat winner because, of course, let's not talk too much about the fiasco of Bristol last week. But Trey Wright picking up his second win of the season. That and the Daytona 500 right now solidifying him a spot in this season's playoffs, provided he remains in the top 30 in points. And he's up to 11th in the point standing. So Trey Wright definitely having a career year. But on the pole position for this one, it's going to be Jessica Shelton. Been a long winless streak for the driver out of S3 Motorsports. And she's going to start alongside of Charles Belding, who took a victory as a rookie last season. I believe, I want to say it was at Rockingham, but I might be incorrect. Uh, it actually might have been the season finale at Homestead. My memory is failing me on that, but that's okay. It was a long time ago, and uh, everybody else will probably remember, and I won't. Uh, in the second row, it's going to be all Fords. That's going to be Cody Lamas in the 84. Uh, Cody has actually been struggling quite a bit here in the early portions of the season, trying to see if he can bounce back. Cody comes into this race 34th in the point stage. That is about the fifth highest of drivers that have started all six races this season. Jordan Lopez, the defending champion of the series, He's been kind of up and down during the first six races, but he finds himself currently in the 15th position in points, trying to see if he can get a victory, get into the playoffs again, and defend his championship. And then completing the top five is going to be the only dodge up inside the top five, and that is Nathan Ormond in the 45 machine. Ormond had a, a solid outing last week at Bristol, and that moved him up nine spots in the stands. Now 16th in points coming into today's event. Two former winners here at Springfield are in the field. We will get to them in just a moment. You can look down in the description below for your full starting lineup for today's race. And also going to mention a little bit different of a Springfield race here as opposed to what we've had in the past. And I will explain why in just a moment. But for now, let's go down trackside, get those most famous words in motorsports. All right, so what's different, you're probably asking. Well, according to this particular track, this track does not like drivers to make pit stops. There is a steel guardrail that separates the pit stalls from the pit boxes, and drivers slide into their pit stalls that are dirt texture, uh, and then end up hitting the inside wall with a realistic damage, get a lot of left side damage, and have extended stays on pit road. So for this race, and maybe for DuCoin later on this season, this is going to be a no damage race. I don't want any drivers getting penalized due to stupid stuff that takes place just based off the pit boxes. So it will be a no damage race. So more than likely, everyone's still going to have a shot at this victory and nobody will end up... Uh, you know, having pit road play a factor, an unnecessary factor in the outcome of this one. A lot of this stemming from the uh, breakfast that we had back at Bristol. Don't want to have to deal with getting frustrated with another offline race. As Jessica Shelton and Charles Belding, a couple of Camaros will lead them down. The two former winners in the field, the defending winner of this race from last year is Zach Rogers. Two seasons ago in season two, it was Michael Norman. The inaugural winner at this race is not in the field, but we did see him earlier today, and that is Dylan Poteet, who failed to qualify in today's event through the non-charter heat race. Here we go, though. 50 laps of racing here in the Springfield 500 as Jessica Shelton, her Chevrolet Camaro, leads us down. Green flags in the air. Let's roll. Shelton the early advantage off of turn two, but Cody Lamas has cleared, belding for second. Now he's going to look to the inside of Shelton for the lead into turn three. Three different manufacturers have won here at Springfield of the three former winners I talked about. The only manufacturer that hasn't won here is a Ford, and Cody Lamas trying to put his blue oval out in front. When Poteet won here in Season 1, it was a Chevy. When Norman won here in Season 2, it was a Toyota. And when Rogers won here last year, it was a Dodge. Just now Ford side-by-side side for the lead. Jordan Lopez to the bottom. Cody Lamas on the top. And we saw in the heat race earlier today, it's not going to take them long to tick away 50 laps for sure. 
as Wu Shelton got a little loose there off of turn four. Nearly came down Nathan Ormond as Lopez might have Llamas cleared here into turn one. Look how the car dips down to the left. That's because the back end wants to kick out. Not a lot of grip for these stock cars. They're not really made for dirt racing as we've got them side by side and pushing each other into the wall back here. That's Jose Mills in the middle, Cole Baker on the bottom, and Mills was running Belding out of room, and I think Belding may have scraped the wall coming off that corner. Keith Batson now looking to the inside in the 39 machine. And look at Charles Sanford. I didn't even see the 0-3 working his way up here to the front. He's now three wide for a second. We're three wide, two rows deep in one and two. Oh boy, I mean these drivers were told there's no damage so maybe they're willing to race it up hard. Oh, we nearly had a wreck right there as Nathan Orman crowded Cody Lamas up into the wall. Shelton's going to lose a lot of ground because of this as she had to check up as well. Back up at the front though, lead change. Charles Sanford will go to the front. And Baker now looking to the inside of Lopez for second. These drivers are racing in the early stages like chickens with their heads cut off willing to take the risks because they know there is no damage. And now Batson's going to look to the inside here. Three wide again for the race lead down the back straightaway. They're mixing it up further back, but the top five have broken away for a moment. Ooh, I think Ryan Butcher may have gotten to the right rear quarter panel of Keith Batson. Then he almost came up into the left rear quarter panel of Charles Sanford. Who leads the lap? Batson's got the run. He'll lead the lap. Here comes Ryan Butcher to the bottom. We mentioned about drivers trying to join Trey Wright as a repeat winner. Well, Ryan Butcher took a checkered flag at Las Vegas earlier on this season. Trying to go to victory lane for the second time this year. Cody Lamas has been able to rebound after he and Norm had gotten the wall earlier. He's up in sixth place now. Belding, who was up in the wall earlier, is in seventh. Carter Friesen's now up to eighth, and how about Dylan Schwallenberg? One of our non-charter drivers has already worked his way from outside the top 35 up to the 11th position. Almost got blocked by Jessica Shelton there. That was close into turn one. And another of our non-charter drivers, Arthur Xavier, the Napa Chevrolet out of Northeast Motorsports, has worked his way up into the top 15. So talk about some hard chargers as, ooh, Jose Mills into the back of Carter Friesen. A lot of these drivers are slapping the wall now off of turn two, trying to carry way more speed than they're able to. As Batson now out in front, Butcher in second, then a gap back to the battle for third between Lopez and Sanford. Ooh, Lopez going to get the wall pretty good there. That's going to give Sanford the advantage. Looks like if you're double wide now coming off of turn two and you're on that outside line, you're in big trouble because that inside line driver is going to crowd you up there and the wall just kind of surprises you, jumps out at you when you come off the corner. Ford, Toyota, Chevy. That's your top three. Got to go a ways back before you find the closest dodge, and that would be Ryan Brommer, another former winner from this season, who won at ISM a couple of weeks ago. Now Xavier and Jesse Turner, they're going to battle. believe that is for the 11th position as Turner got the wall, and right in front of Jose Mills, Mills going to lose a lot of spots. How about Matt Haas? Good run here for the M&M's Pretzel Toyota Camry. Matt Haas looking to go to Victor Lane for the second time in his career and make the playoffs for the second straight year. And there's another of our non-charter drivers. How about Will Goss? First career start for Will Goss in the 20 machine. Right now up in the 14th position. What if he could pull off a Chris Dollerton? What if a non-charter driver could go to Victory Lane here today? Oh, Will thought about four wide up the middle. Did you see that? Not willing to lift after... Who was it? Ryan Brommer, I think, got the wall. Look at Jack Mitchell! Force his way on the inside. Something I think is wrong with the two car. Something's wrong with Dylan Young. I don't know what it is, but that two car all of a sudden is really slow. Dylan Young, a former winner from this season. There is no damage, but that doesn't mean these drivers can't lose a gear, lose a cylinder, have a mechanical problem, and I think something is desperately wrong with Dylan Young. Aside from the fact he just got pushed into the wall by Kyle Matthews there, Dylan Young in the two is off the pace. Might have possibly lost a cylinder. And with a track like Springfield, it's a mile in length, these long straightaways, you need to have all the power under the hood you possibly can. 
as Ryan Brommer crosses over rookie Will Goss for the 11th position. Further up front with three wide, teammates! That's Baker and Schwallenberg out of DCW Racing with Jordan Lopez, the defending champ, the inside! Ooh, he almost forced Schwallenberg up into Baker. Shelton almost gets up into Schwallenberg. I am shocked that we are still green with the way these drivers are beating and bagging, rubbing doors, hooking fenders. How have we been able to complete 12 laps without a caution coming out? Dylan Schwallenberg is another driver. We talked about Will Goss. Oh, careful. Baker in the wall, but Schwallenberg is another driver like Will Goss making his first career start here in the Duracell Cup Series and doing a heck of a job right now in the seventh position battling with Jessica Shelton. As a matter of fact, this I believe is the most DCW racing cars to take a green flag so far this season with Baker the chartered ride and Will Goss and Dylan Schwallenberg getting in the non-charter uh, heat. The only driver that's missing out of the team that did not make it was Tristan Allen. Keith Batson continues to show the way, but all of a sudden, he's got some friends. Ryan Butcher has been there. Charles Sanford has caught up, and now Charles Belding is in the vicinity as well. It's Reese's versus Krispy Kreme for that third position. Another change. I probably should have mentioned this. On most races, it's 2X for the fuel. It was actually changed to 1X, but I'm pretty sure even with 1X, these drivers are going to have to be on pit road before this 50 lapper is over. So green flag pit stops could very well come into play in this one. But again, with no damage, these drivers will not have to worry about sitting there for two, three laps getting left side damage repaired due to a stupid glitch on pit road when these drivers pull into their pit stalls. And Belding is on a charge. Started on the outside of the front row and trying to work his way back at least to where he started looking for second place on Ryan Butcher. And as these guys race side by side, it's actually allowing Keith Batson to pull away. Cody Lamas firmly in fifth. Sixth is under contest, Jordan Lopez, Dylan Schwallenberg, Jessica Shelton, and Matt Haas. That's sixth on back through ninth. As Schwallenberg brushes the wall just the least little bit there off of turn two. If you brush it, you're pretty much okay. You can still battle, but if you slam it like we've seen a number of drivers do, you're going to lose so much momentum, and in turn, if you're battling with drivers, you're going to lose spots on track. Now, we did not mention the uh, point stands coming into this race. Let's find out where some of our front runners in the points are, because I think right now the highest running of them, fifth in the standings, Jack Mitchell, who I saw working his way up here. There he is. He's right now in the 15th position. Everybody else ahead of him in the top five in points are way back here. Let's see if we can find them. There's Michael Norman, third in points, former winner of this event back in season two. Right now, he's in 22nd. Levi McIntyre, who came in the points leader, is back here. Battling with Natan Amiedo, the non-charter driver. That is for, I believe, the 26th position. And, of course, we already documented Dylan Young. Looks like he is down a cylinder or something. He is way back. Yeah, he's dropped all the way back here to the tail end of the field. Right now scoring the 41st position and going up the middle three wide with James Qualls and Cole Deaver. Whatever was wrong with Dylan Young looks like it's been fixed. Maybe he had an electrical problem, had to switch over the boxes, but now he's starting to make some forward progress again. But that's second in points, Dylan Young working his way up through the field. There's last week's winner from Bristol, the only two-time winner on the season, Trey Wright. And let's not forget, Trey Wright's first career Duracell Cup Series victory came back, I believe it was in Season 1, at Lakewood. He did not make it into the playoffs, though. He wasn't high enough in the playoff standings, so I kind of thought that he would take pretty well here to a dirt track. But right now, riding back outside of the top 30. William Brock, there's a driver that needs a good run. I'll tell you why, because William Brock, of all the drivers that have taken all six green flags this season of the chartered rides, William Brock is the furthest back, 39th in the standings. That's behind drivers that have had limited numbers of starts, like Samet Oscon, Chris Dollerton, and Brad Stover. He's 39th out of 36 drivers that are chartered rides. So he needs a good run here today. There's Adam Garcia, still looking for his first career Duracell Cup Series victory as he's trying to get to the inside of the points leader, Levi McIntyre. Garcia's having a great start to the year, sixth in points. And there's a former champion in Ryan Acosta, the Season 2 champion. Ryan's 20th in the points coming to this one right now, scored in the 25th position. Ooh, Zach Rogers 
Rear deck lid completely full of the Napa Chevrolet. Oh, there might be some contact right there. That could cut down a tire. As Arthur Xavier will make the pass on last year's winner here from Springfield. Closing in on halfway, when do these drivers decide to pit? Will Goss looking to take 12th position away from Jesse Turner. Looks like he's got him cleared at the start finish line. Dylan Schwallenberg, Jessica Shelton, Cole Baker continue to mix it up. That is for eighth place. Matt Haas is now getting passed for sixth by Cody Lamas as they're trying to reel in Jordan Lopez and Carson Gum is the first car one lap down. He just got lapped moments ago. 42nd for the guy who comes in fourth in the point stands. Eight points out of the points lead. Second place battle. Ryan Butcher to the inside, looking anyway on Charles Belding. And the both of them are closing up ground here on the Motorcraft Ford of Keith Batson. Batson was a former playoff contender last season. I'm trying to remember where his win was at. I remember that his very first career win was back in season two at Richmond. I can't remember where his win was last year. And we may have more traffic for these drivers to deal with. Let's see, Batson's coming off of four. Austin LaPlante is just now heading into one another driver I'm shocked is not running so well here in, in Austin LaPlante because he had a dirt track win last year winning one of the uh, Chili Bowl heats along with his teammate Jacob Thibodeau who's just a couple of cars ahead of him so really surprised to see both of these drivers struggling here today lead under fire Belding will take it you saw Batson try and pin him down couldn't do it so Charles Belding will go to the point First time in the last 10 laps or so, we've actually had a lead change as Keith Batson has been enjoying the clean air or as clean as it can get at a dirt track when there's dust around every corner. Batson wants the lead back though. And Belding's gonna get the wall there off of two. That's gonna lose him momentum. And now Charles Sanford, who just got around Ryan Butcher, gonna enter up into this conversation. 78 fell off all of a sudden. So I don't know if something's wrong there with Ryan Butcher or if he might be trying to save fuel. We now know that if these drivers come to pit road at any point now, they would be good to go the rest of the way because they have made it past the halfway point. Whoa, Sanford driving it in deep. And it slid up the corner and into Belding's left rear quarter panel. Belding's going to get the wall again as Sanford will go to the point. Charles Sanford comes into this race. In the 37th position in stands, we talked about William Brock being 36th of the 36 drivers that are chartered rides as far as uh, points position. Well, Charles Sanford, not much better. He's 35th of the 36 drivers. Charles Belding. There's another driver that's been struggling here in the early portions of the season. 32nd in points. And Keith Batson. He is, if I can find him here on the list, he is 33rd. So, you know, oh, wow, LaPlante's going to go a lap down. So right now, your top three are drivers that come into this race 32nd, 33rd, and 37th in points. So you think they want to turn the season around here today at Springfield? Sanford's going to get the wall there as Belding actually getting pushed down the back straightaway by Ryan Butcher. And now Bats is going to have to start dealing with a lot of traffic. Dawson Wise in the... 81, Jacob Thibodeau the 33, James Qualls the 54, Cole Deaver in the 08 as Batson's going to take them three wide and boy all of a sudden hitting this traffic Keith Batson has found a new gear and he is opening up some distance and putting some pretty good blockades between himself and now the new second place driver which is Charles Sanford being able to hold off Charles Belding maybe nope going to get the wall pretty good there off of two again so Belding goes back to the second position. Let's see how quickly Belding can deal with the lap traffic. Wow, that car really pushed up there off the corner. He's going to get around Thibodeau, who got awfully loose there off of four. Now going to take Dawson Wise three wide. Look at Charles Sanford trying the top side. Is he going to go four wide? Oh, he's looking for room. They are four wide. As Ryan Butcher took it to the inside, Sanford had his nose in between Thibodeau and Dawson Wise. And now Belding going to take James Qualls and Cole Deaver three wide. Oh boy, there almost might have been some contact there door-to-door -door with the 91 and the 54. Belding's going to clear. 
Ryan Butcher looks to do the same. And these two now, if they can settle their differences and just kind of work together, they've got to cut down a near two second gap between themselves and Keith Batson. Batson's got more traffic to deal with up ahead. Ke uh, Levi McIntyre, the points leader, who more than likely will not be the points leader when we leave Springfield. And we'll also William Brock in the 88, and he's only about a corner away from catching those two drivers, is Batson. Battle for second is back on again between Ryan Butcher, Charles Belding, and Charles Sanfer. Now, one thing I should mention is the damage is turned off, so these drivers will not get damaged when they come and hit their pit stalls, but there is the possibility they could overshoot their stall, have to back up, and may serve some kind of a 30-second penalty for that. So, you know, there's nothing that I could do to eliminate that contingency. So pit road could still very much play a factor in the outcome of this race if and when these drivers come to pit road for that pit stop. But the question is when? When do they do it? As McIntyre will go a lap down, Brock's about to go a lap down, Zach Rogers about to go a lap down. It's incredible how drivers that do so well at a track one season, they just struggle the following year. Zach Rogers had a dominating win here last season and already finds himself a lap down. He actually just uh, got passed for a couple more positions by William Brock and Levi McIntyre, so drop him back right now to the 41st position. Actually, I think the six might have been on pit road at some point. I think he might be multiple laps down. Yeah, he is two laps down. Carson Gum right now is five laps down. So right now, 32 cars on the lead lap. All 42 still running. And with the exception of Rogers and Gum, those that are now in the lead lap are only minus one to race leader Keith Batson, who continues to open up his gap to second place, which is now Charles Sanfer. But it's about probably three and a half seconds now as Sanfer has to get around William Brock and Levi McIntyre. Let's drop back, see if there's any battle that's going on inside of the top 10 as Matt Haas. Working his way now up to fifth, getting around Dylan Schwallenberg. All these drivers having to deal with that big group of traffic of lap machines. William, or Will Goss, rather, along with Jordan Lopez, Cole Baker, and Jessica Shelton. These drivers are all up inside of the top ten right now from fifth on back to tenth place. And you got Jose Mills back in the vicinity there as well, trying to crack the top ten. Ryan Brommer, Arthur Xavier there as well. Oh, if we're going to have a caution, it might be right here. Look at this. We're three wide, two rows deep again, and we didn't see this until you know, like earlier on in this race, things got rather spread out, but now they have congested from sixth place on back as, woo, Dawson Wise was looking at the outside of Schwalenberg. Schwalenberg moved up and threw a heck of a block down the front straightaway. Now he's on the top side three wide with Lopez and Shelton. Great runs for all three of the DCW racing Toyota Camrys that made it into the event. Schwalenberg, Goss, and Baker all up inside the top 10 right now. And Goss trying to work his way up into the top five as he will get by Jordan Lopez, maybe. Following in the tire tracks of Jessica Shelton. Matt Haas, great run here for the eight machine. Matt coming into this race. In the... Try to see if I can find him. I don't know why it's been so difficult for me to find driver's name in the list unless it's the fact there's a lot of them. 32nd or 36th in points, rather, for Matt Haas. So another driver, like Belding, Sanfer, and Batson, that's en route to a great run here today. Charles Sanfer and Ryan Butcher now battling for second have kind of gapped themselves back to Charles Belding, who's currently in fourth place. Matthew Rodriguez is going to lap down. A lot more traffic here for Keith Batson. Stuck in a three-wide situation as he'll put LaPlante another lap down. He just lapped our only two-time winner this season, Trey Wright. Phil Parker got put a lap down. He's really good at the dirt track. Surprised he's a lap down already. Johnny Gardner is about to get lapped in the 14. And Mitchell Collins in the 22 just up ahead. That's 28th place. Natan Amiedo as well as Adam Garcia just up ahead as well. So we could have less than 20 cars on the lead lap when this thing is all said and done. But now Batson's stuck on that outside line. Johnny Gardner on the inside with Trey Wright. We'll see if Batson can clear Gardner around the top, and he will. But Batson's got a strong race car. 
And I don't know if Ryan Butcher used up a lot of his stuff trying to keep pace with the 39 or not, but he was the only one that looked like he was able to mount a challenge on Keith Batson, at least earlier on. And Batson now, after being able to make his way through traffic, he has pulled away by over three and a half seconds. Look at how he's making these passes on these drivers. Swung around Natan Miedo, now going to have to deal with another Ford and Adam Garcia. Ducks it down to the bottom. Let's see how quick, how easily he makes this pass. Drives it in deep. You can hear him downshift there. And then back up through the gears. And I mean, he just, he just knows how to attack the corners on entry and exit. Keith Batson. En route for what would be his third career win, but first here of season four. We're at less than 10 to go as well, and we have not seen a caution. We've seen some hard racing all the way through the field, but no caution, which is such a welcome change after what we had at Bristol last week. But I keep wondering, are these drivers going to have to pit? It was set to 1x, and I thought that more than likely being CTS Physics, they would have to pit at least in 50 laps. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. As Charles Sanford looking for his best finish of the season. Uh, but Batson, Sanford, Belding... And Matt Haas, all looking for their first top fives of the season. Ryan Butcher, obviously, in the third position, has won as he had a victory earlier on this year at Las Vegas. Sanford trying to get around last week's winner, Trey Wright. Ooh, had to use the bumper. Moving the 28 up the track, trying to make sure he keeps away from Ryan Butcher. Whoa, Butcher! Got close to that left rear quarter panel of Trey Wright. Remember, if a caution comes out, we still would end up having a restart. And now Zach Stoltz is going to get put a lap down. 25th place. Stoltz making his second start of the season. Duracell. Qualified his way in in the non-charter event earlier on today. As Batson continues to put on a clinic. But actually, uh, that last time by, he only gained two tenths. So Sanford is actually being a little bit efficient right now. Oh boy, got held up there behind Natan Amiedo though. Ryan Butcher saw the opportunity, he's going to take it. Tries to get to the inside of Charles Sanford for second place. Remember for Ryan Butcher, he's trying to keep himself up there in the top 30 in points now to make it into the playoffs. Failed to make the playoffs last year. Ryan's 21st in the points coming into this one, so wants to get himself away from that 30th in the standings cut line. This is the best battle right now, at least up inside of the top five. Then you got that mayhem back here, fifth place on back. There it is, Matt Haas, Jordan Lopez, Jose Mills, Jessica Shelton. That is fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth places. Teammates side by side for sixth. Jose Mills to the inside of Jordan Lopez. Shelton waiting to see if the hole will open up on the inside line, which it looks like it will through three and four. What's the fuel situation for these drivers as race leader Keith Batson just hit five laps to go? Michael Norman's on pit road in the 18. Oh boy. Who's got the fuel to make it? That's got to be a regularly scheduled stop for the 18 car as well. Because they aren't pitting for damage. Keith Batson stays out. Doesn't look like anybody up in the top five is pitting. What is the situation? Carson Gums back on pit road in the 19. I think he's been struggling with some mechanical issues because he fell five laps down early on in this one. Batson into the wall. There's Michael Norman just now coming back onto the track. He was short on fuel. Batson stuck on the outside line. If he wanted to pit this time, he couldn't. Norman had him boxed out. Michael's running rather slow there on the bottom of the track as well. Don't see anybody hitting pit road here. This is getting interesting. Were they able to save any? Carson Gum now coming off of pit road as Sanfer makes the pass on Michael Norman. Sanfer's closing. I don't know if he's got enough car to get up there and close up two seconds, but he's now clear of all traffic. He's got only himself and Keith Batson up ahead. Problem is, it's two laps to go. Sanford would have to close up about two seconds in two laps. Let's see this time by who was faster. Sanford was by about a tenth. But he's going to need a lot more than that if he's going to catch up to the 39. Maybe Batson will run out of fuel. 
That last time by, Sanford ran a 32-4 to Batson's 32-5, but he's finding this surge just a little too late. There is a slow car up ahead. Austin LaPlante in the 48. Will he play a factor here? Would it be enough for Sanford to mount a charge? Batson will get to the white flag here. Question is, does he have enough fuel to get to the checkers? One lap to go here today at Springfield. It's been a dominating performance by Keith Batson after he took the race lead. Two tenths was closed up by Sanford. Batson going to clear Austin LaPlante out of turn two. That's all he needed. He took it conservative to get around the 48, but now sets sail in three and four. Keith Batson is going to make it 50 laps on fuel. It, I think it was close for a lot of these drivers, but Keith Batson is going to come off the corner. His first win of the season is going to take place here in the Springfield 500 at the Springfield Mile. Sanford gets second, Butcher in third, Belding crossed in fourth, and who gets fifth? It's going to be Jose Mills. Well, when we saw Michael Norman on pit road, I wondered. I wondered if all these drivers were going to be able to make it on fuel or if they'd have to pit within five laps to go, but they were able to make it. A lot of times going into the corner, you're off the throttle waiting for the nose to point to get back to the throttle on corner exit because you're slideways going into these turns at the dirt tracks. So maybe, just maybe, that was enough for these drivers to save that little bit of fuel they needed to make it to the conclusion of this race. Standing should be official, and indeed they are, as 23 drivers will finish on the lead lap. Keith Batson, Charles Sanford, Ryan Butcher mentioned that they came into this race all outside the top 30 in points. Great runs for them. For Batson, this will move him into the top 30 in points, but he needs to keep himself ahead of that cut line to advance into what would be, I believe, his uh, second playoff appearance. He made the chase uh, last year. I don't think he made it back in Season 2 despite his Richmond win. Charles Sanford going to finish his best of the season so far with a second place run. Ryan Butcher brings it home third, so he'll move away from that cut line after he had his Las Vegas win. Charles Belden, as we mentioned, great run there in fourth. And how about Jose Mills? We didn't really talk a whole lot about the 98 car here today, despite uh, the fact that he was up in the top 10 for most of that final 20 laps. He's going to bring it home in the fifth position. A driver that came in 17th in the point standing, so a well-deserved run for him. How about Jessica Shelton? Another good run for her. Shelton uh, struggled Last week at Bristol, fell to 27th in points, gets a top 10 run today after starting on the pole. Jordan Lopez, the defending champion, will bring it home in 7th, followed by Matt Haas in 8th. Cole Baker will finish in 9th. And how about rookie of the race? That's going to be Arthur Xavier, finishing in the 10th position out of Northeast Motorsports. Jesse Turner was 11th. Benny Watson brings it home 12th. That 75 team has been on a hot streak in the last three races as he was... Uh, Eighth in the points coming to this one after a good run at Bristol last week. Jumped up four spots in stance. He'll continue to climb in points. Cody Lamas brings it home in eighth. Will Goss will finish in ninth. A good effort for the non-charter car there. And Ryan Brommer will finish in 15th. Uh, Dylan Schwalberg, another of the non-charter drivers with good performance here today. Uh, for Will Goss and Dylan Schwalberg, really their performance is not reflected in the finishing results. Both those drivers had top 10 cars and were up in the top 10 competing most of this race. Carter Friesen will finish 17th, followed by Nathan Norman, Vince Almriego, and Kyle Matthews. Last drivers to finish on the lead lap are Patrick Smith, Jack Mitchell, and Ryan Acosta. Now here's where the big thing was, because Mitchell finished last car on the lead lap in 22nd. He was 5th in points. First through fourth in the standings, didn't even finish on the lead lap. Dylan Young, second in points, finished a lap down in 24th. Levi McIntyre, the points leader, finished a lap down in 38th. Michael Norman, third in points. He finished two laps down in 39th. And Carson Gum, fourth in the standings, finished 42nd, nine laps down. That is a huge point shakeup that's going to take place here after Springfield, just based off of a lot of our front runners struggling here today. You can even go down further. A lot of other drivers that struggled here today. Adam Garcia, 6th in points, finishing 26th. And Jacob Thibodeau, 7th in the standings, finishing in 33rd position. So, no doubt, Springfield, 
despite the fact that uh, we've, we fixed the damage issue that drivers would have had if they came to pit road, uh, it still played a huge factor into what the point stands are going to look like heading into next week. And these drivers, their struggles are not over. Next week's going to be another wild one as we're going to be going to New Zealand and going road course racing at Pukaka Raceway. The road course is going to be a wild one for these drivers. Cannot wait for that. But Keith Batson gets his first win of the season. Third career win here in the Duracell. Cup Series and thusly locks himself up a spot momentarily in this season's playoffs. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race here from Springfield. If you did, be sure to be a like, subscribe, and part through today. We've shown you full finger results, and these are what your point stands look like heading into Pukaka Road Course next week. I've been Seth Cole. You've been watching a production of the A Offline Racing at its best.